Hey guys, how are you all doing? My name is Dr. Davis, and today, this is going to be a little bit of a fun video. You guys might get triggered at this, but I'm going to be discussing every single Black Ops 4 perk in the game. So, that would be like the new Quicker Buy, the new Stamina, all of that. I'm also going to be discussing their modifiers, so, and just, be, just to be aware, every single modifier in this game as weapon reload speed is increased because you know speed cola is not even in the game this year or in this game but yeah so we're going to be discussing every single perk i'm going to be giving my opinion on it because i don't care what any of you guys say about it it's my opinion and i know what's a good perk and what's not a good perk so yeah you guys you guys are going to be in for a lot of fun today if you guys want to see more videos like these please leave a like comment subscribe for more and yeah it, we probably might jump right into this soon, but I also want to address, I did a video similar to this a few years ago. Um, it's on my main channel, it's on one of my other main channels. Um, it's on my vlog channel, it was one of my older videos, it's like maybe four years ago. I posted a video discussing every single perk from World at War to Black Ops 3, and you guys gave me shit for it because I said the wrong uh, things that they do, like Tombstone, I said they don't give your perks back. Just to be aware, I specifically made that video to trigger people. Like, <laughs> I usually don't do things like that, but I just decided to do it for my own enjoyment. And I know you guys are really, really pissed at me, and that's my most viewed video on my channel. So yeah, uh, thanks for the views, and also thanks for the amount of hate comments that I got. Jesus. But, yeah. Anyways, no questions asked, let's jump into this. The first perk that we're going to be going over today is the perk Time Slip. Now, what this perk does is that it, the equipment cooldown rate is increased, um, and the Mystery Box and Pack a Punch are like going a mil, a millisecond every time you put the freaking weapon out of the box or you put the weapon in the Pack a Punch machine, and it greatly reduces the trap and fast travel cooldown. So yeah, um, I guess this perk is like really good if you're doing Easter eggs. I was doing the Tag Your Toe in Easter egg the other day, and I actually beat it when I was using Time Slip because the fire sales and um, we use temporal gift on the fire sales and the box weapons just came at me like no other. Um, anyways, what the modifier does, um, the special weapon charge is increased and the elixir, the elixir cooldown is slightly increased. Um, and obviously, so like I said before, the, all the modifiers they have. Um, Increase weapon reload speed because speed cola is not in the game and yeah I, I'm gonna give time slip like I'd say it's a good perk, but it's only useful if you're doing Easter eggs Our next perk is our good old friend quick revive So the only difference from this and the other versions is that in solo it doesn't give you a solo self revive instead it only gives you a shorter delay of regenerating health and increased regeneration rate and obviously it still has the same mechanic of what it has in multiplayer, you revive players faster. So I guess you could say that they probably nerfed this, but with the with the accounting of modifiers, uh, they might have buffed it. I'm not really sure. I can't really tell, but the modifier for this is you gain a sprint speed boost after the, um, the health regeneration starts and reviving players will both will, will grant both the players that um, were reviving and the one that was being revived full, full health automatically and the sprint speed boost and obviously weapon speed is increased so quick revive is probably not the best thing to use in solo that's ki i kind of learned that the hard way because when i went down doing an easter egg the other day i was absolutely pissed because i had quick revive but really i finally realized that yeah it doesn't work like that like how it used to in the old games so yeah that's quick revive our next perk we got here is called death perception so obviously death and death perception you guys know the deal but what you do with death perception is you can see nearby zombies through walls so it's kind of a substitution for vulture aid in a sense where you can see things through walls but instead of seeing perks in the mystery box and such you can only see zombies and the also other good thing about it is that you can receive a screen indicator that in which the enemies approach a player from off the screen and so like it's also kind of like sixth sense for a multiplayer in a sense i just said sense multiple times in that sense well anyways yeah, so that's it, and the modifier, you can deal increased damage to special enemy weak points. So, like, say if you're fighting the werewolf on Dead of the Night, you can deal increased damage to him in the chest. And what else do you got? Like, the big six-armed dude in Ancient Evil. I forgot what the name of that boss was, but anyways, yeah. Um, Death Perception is an okay perk. I'm not the person that really uses it much, but it's obviously, it's a usable perk. I think it's acceptable in this game. Our next perk is a stamina up. Obviously, you guys know the regular um, thing of stamina up of how it increases your sprint speed and duration. Well, 
other than that, the regular stamina up um, cause, or I guess you could call it, um, it also regenerates your stamina a little bit faster than usual. So I'm not exactly sure if this was in the previous games, but that's what it says on this description. Um, but the modifier, you get unlimited full sprint, which is absolutely busted in certain situations. And the player can fire weapons while sprinting. So basically firing on all cylinders, but without using the elixir or gobble gum. I think that's what the elixir was. But yeah, I would definitely put stamina up as a modifier in most Easter egg Easter egg setups. But um, other than that, stamina up is a pretty good perk in Black Ops 4. I would definitely recommend using it if you already haven't. Our next perk we have is Ethereal Razor. So obviously most people probably don't use this perk because it's only a melee kind of perk. Um, what it does is that offhand melees, um, the swipes affect the swipes of the melees affect multiple enemies in a certain like in a certain range. Um, and the offhand swipe and lunge they give bonus damage and they also restore a small amount of your health, which I guess it's okay. But like again, like I said before, people don't use this perk much often. And the modifier is um, the offhand lunge attacks instantly kill basic zombies and they do greater bonus damage to the other types of zombies. And obviously, weapon reload speed is increased. Don't need to mention that every single time, but yeah, uh, there's Ethereal Razor. Um, if you want to use that, you can. Um, I don't use it personally, but yeah, it's there. Our next perk is Blood Wolf Bite. Now, just a little disclaimer, I would definitely not use this perk if you're, or if you're in the middle of an Easter egg. But what this does is that if you inflict a lot of damage in like a bunch of zombies, so like say if you kill all the zombies and there's like maybe 12 of them and you kill all of them within a second, then it's going to spawn a wolf named Luna and it's going to basically basically help you along the on the on the way like i said it's going to be bad if you do easter eggs because if you spawn the wolf in like say if you're saving a zombie at the end of the round if you spawn a wolf too quick it's probably going to end the round but yeah um the modifier is that the enemies killed by the wolf they have a chance to drop a small amount of ammo points or power so it basically another type of vulture aid mechanic in that and yeah i mean like it's it's an okay perk just to use casually but in easter eggs i definitely would not recommend this it's a good perk just not meant for easter eggs our next perk we have is a perk named zom shell it's kind of a weird name for it but what happens in this perk is that if you kill a basic zombies they have a chance to explode and they also they have a chance to leave behind behind a contamination field that will slow the enemies and it also increases damage to them um and the cooldown increases with each explosion but it also resets at the start of every round so I mean, it's all right. It's not a bad perk, but there's obviously better choices than Zom Shell. Um, the modifiers, um, players with the modifier are really ignored, ignored, ignored by zombies while standing in the contamination field. So basically, another vulture aid mechanic. So I, I guess it's kind of cool how Black Ops Four did this. They separated the vulture aid mechanics into different perks. But yeah, if you guys want to use this, like I said, it's probably a casual perk by this point. So yeah, feel free to use it whenever you like. Next up on this list is a very, very fun perk to use, and it's called Blaze Phase. What you do is that if you crouch, then it's going to start... Your, your body's basically going to start light, lighting on fire. And once that happens, um, if you press the B button or if you press down on the analog stick, if you play on tactical, um, you'll basically dash through, dash through basically a horde of zombies if you have a horde of zombies in front of them. So it's like Blaze Phase. So just think about it. You, you crouch and then you uncrouch. And once you uncrouch, you go through the zombies. So yeah, uh, if you if you stay crouched, then you get a better a better charge, and you go from more to the distance. And um, if you need to like say if you accidentally just charge it on accident and you don't know how to get out of it, just press A to jump, and you'll get out of it. Um, the modifier, the dashing distance, is infinite at max charge. And yeah, geez, that's busted as hell. But upon ending a dash, um, release a final damage pulse that knocks down enemies. So yeah. Um, very, very fun perk to use on casual. Um, you could use this on the Easter eggs, but again, you don't want to have to risk ending the round. So yeah, that's Blaze Phase. Our next perk on this list is Electric Cherry or Electric Burst. That's what it's referred to as in this game. What it does is if you've played BO2 and BO3 and such, um, it basically the reloading causes an electric discharge and it stuns basically all the nearby zombies. It has a tiny chance to kill them, but yeah, it stuns them nearby. Um, but there's also a catch to this, um, compared to Electric Cherry, this one has a little buff to it. Um, the more empty the magazine, the stronger the damage, so, yeah, it increases the damage to this, so that's cool. 
Um, the modifier, it kind of, it stores an electric discharge when you're reloading on the player's melee weapon. So basically the next melee attack, um, it empowers the weapon to strike the enemies for a limited time. So just think about it. So like if you have electric cherry in your modifier slot and then once you melee a zombie, kind of like ethereal razor, but in the sense that you're using an electric burst to it. So yeah, and the, obviously the more empty the magazine, uh, the longer the time the weapon reload speed is increased. So yeah. That's Electric Cherry, definitely use that in Easter eggs because it can save you in tight situations. Our next perk on this list is by far one of the best perks in this game and is Dying Wish. So the trick to this Dying Wish is that um, instead of just entering last stand, you know when you go down and you have to wait for somebody to revive you, um, instead you're going to go in Berserk mode for about 9 seconds and when you're Berserk you're completely invulnerable to the zombies and melee damage is very 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 increased. And afterwards the player is going to be left with 1 health and the cooldown increases with every use. So yeah, it's just like, it's a pretty busted perk. So basically you're not even gonna go down and you have a chance to still kill kill all the zombies around you. I almost kill yourself, that would be bad. But yeah, Dying Wish is a pretty good perk. Um, the modifier, um, the, the player is gonna receive full health when um, no longer Berserk. So the modifier is definitely not that great, but the perk itself is a, an A+. So yeah, definitely use this if you need to. Our next perk on this list is a pretty good perk as well. Um, it's called Stone Cold Stronghold. So basically the whole trick to this is that if you stand in place for the, about 3 to 5 seconds, it's going to create a giant circle, a defensive circle, which boosts your damage and armor over time while inside. So basically, uh, if, you play, if you guys play the game like Brawl Stars or something like that, it's a mobile game, um, there's a certain brawler that gives you a little contamination field that increases your damage. So it's basically like that. And the modifier is any, any enemies that are killed inside the circle will boost the damage and armor. Yeah, I know, pretty busted, right? Definitely use this if you get if you get into a casual game. I'm not entirely sure if this benefits any way in any Easter eggs, but yeah, it's a pretty nice perk, so I'd recommend using it. I'd probably give it maybe a solid 9 out of 10. Another one of the best perks in the game is going to be Victorious Tortoise, my personal favorite perk in this game. So basically what it does is if, if you have a shield on the game and you hold it out in front of you, you are basically immune to damage until the shield is broken. And once the shield is broken, it's going to create a massive explosion and make the zombies go boom boom. So yeah, that's Victorious Tortoise for you. The modifier, um, the shield bash attacks can knock down a bunch of heavy and mini boss enemies. So like say maybe the, uh, the gladiators from 9, if you, just use, if you just use it on those guys, then they're going to be knocked down like that. Just a snap of the fingers. Yeah, I definitely recommend using this perk for an Easter egg, especially in the Tiger Your Tone Easter egg. I do not want to explain how many times I have lost my shield in that game, but yeah, Victorious Tortoise, use it. Our next perk up here is Deadshot Dealer, a better version of Deadshot Daiquiri. So obviously, if you guys know Deadshot Daiquiri, it aim you aim down the sights and it aims directly to the enemy's head. Yeah, not only that, but Deadshot Dealer, it reduces hips it reduces hip spread and recoil while firing and also resu or resumes, removes scope sway. So say if you have a sniper and you see, you know how you freaking your sniper just moves around when you're trying to aim down the sight. Well, guess what? It eliminates all that. And the modifier is even better. If you go on a headshot, headshot streak, then you get a damage boost. Yeah, it only, however, it only applies to primary and secondary weapons. So no wonder weapons allowed. But yeah, if you guys want to use this casually, please be my guest, because Deadshot Dealer just got a buff from Deadshot Daiquiri. The next perk we have on our list is Bandolier Bandit. So this is probably not one of the best perks in the game, because all it does is you, it gives you an increased ammo stock. Yeah, that's pretty bad, because you can literally just use your regular weapons without even having to waste ammo. And if you have a Wonder Weapon, you don't really need to worry about ammo, because say if it's like the Thunder Gun, or maybe the... I was going to say the Apothecan server, but it's not even in this game. So yeah. Um, anyways, the modifier for this gun is that if you refill the ammo of a stored weapon, it'll refill an ammo of the stored weapon from the ammo stock. So basically, if you have a secondary and you're not even using it, it's going to restore ammo over time if it's in the modifier slot. So I guess the only thing good about this perk is just a modifier. Other than that, it's pretty useless in my opinion. Our next perk we have is a very, very great perk in this game, and it's called Winter's Whale. So basically, it's the bootleg version of Widow's Wind, but only better. So basically, what Winter's Whale does is if you get hit by a zombie, then a big giant frost explosion is going to happen, freezing all the zombies behind you or in front of you or maybe to the side of you. The only thing about this, though, is that it only happens in 
th those difficulties. So any difficulty but realistic difficulty, it will have, you'll have to be below 200 health. So you can't be at max health when you get hit. Um, but in realistic difficulty, the frost explosion is going to trigger no matter what your health is. So realistic is like what? 100 health, right? So basically if you get hit, then it's going to trigger the explosion anyway. Um, and the modifier and the frost explosion triggers a basically a slowing field around the player for a limited time. So uh, if you have it in the modifier slot and you get hit, it's going to trigger a massive field slowing every single zombie behind you. And obviously, weapon reload speed is increased. I don't know why I keep saying that. Our next perk is our good old friend Mule Kick, probably one of the most useless perks in the older games. But in this game, it actually serves a purpose. So obviously, if you guys don't know what Mule Kick does, it carries an additional primary weapon, but the modifier is even better. So what happens is you can switch weapons faster. So basically, it's kind of a speed cola issue, but I guess speed cola didn't really do that. But anyways, moving on. But the additional weapon that you that you buy off of Mule Kick, if you lose Mule Kick and then get it back later after you lose your weapon, if it's in the modifier slot, you will get that weapon back after you buy it. So yeah, it's... Honestly, pretty helpful if you want to take a third weapon. I still don't use Mule Kick worth the life of me, but I think that's pretty useful if you guys want to just play casually and just play around with your friends. Maybe even just try to get any as much weapons as you want. Maybe do a pack punch challenge or whatnot. But yeah, definitely use this perk if you want to just do something casually. All right, now next perk in this game is probably the most disappointing perk in this game, and that's PhD Slider, a very, very, very bad version of PhD Flopper. But anyways, so what happens is the technique to this is that you have to slide to build up a charge. Why do you have to slide to build it up when you can just slide off something and then just trigger the explosion there? But anyways, once you're fully charged, um, you can slide into an enemy to trigger an explosion. Um, however, you, you do gain full resistance to self-inflicted explosive damage and partial resistance to enemy explosive damage. But, you know how PhD Flopper um, gives you complete resistance to fall damage? Well, not in this game. This game just said, F you, you guys are not going to get fall, or you guys are going to get fall damage no matter what we do with this perk. But yeah, anyways, uh, the modifier, you can improve slide distance, and the trap immunity while sliding, it gives you increased explosive damage if you enter if you enter a slide from greater heights. So like, say, if you slide off like, a, uh, you know, that big giant like banister area from Blood of the Dead, you can just slide off that. It's the one above the buildable table. Yeah, you can just do that, and it gives you a better better damage rating and yeah i'm just i'm just gonna stop talking about this i don't really like talking about phd flopper and i don't like using it so yeah let's move on and our final per it's not even a perk if you guys just want to do this for shits and giggles um it's called secret sauce it does pretty much absolutely nothing except give you a random perk go figure Anyways, if you guys did enjoy this video, however, please leave a like, comment, and subscribe for more, and I'll do more things like this. I'll probably play zombies on here, uh, but yeah, I, I gotta think of more content ideas, so please leave leave some stuff down in the comments, because I'm absolutely desperate for ideas on this channel. So yeah, um, that's all I gotta say, so I will see you guys in the next video. Peace out.